Ian Duncan Smith. Uh, next week, I rise. I'm going to be quite brief because I know many others want to get in, and I just was going to compare a couple of these amendments and then uh, a few words as to why I think this bill is a very bad bill. I mean, first of all, I do say to the member for Aberavon, who's not sadly in his seat, uh, that I think this is a genuine uh, attempt to try and find a way forward. Uh, and uh, it's intriguing. I've just been reading it now, having just looked at it, and he's very specific in his particularly uh, in one of his amendments in which he says uh, that the purpose of the letter to extend would be, and I quote, to include provisions reflecting the outcome of inter-party talks and announcement by the Prime Minister on 21st May 2019. And, of course, I think the problem... First of all, as I say, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I say that uh, this is a genuine attempt by those who really do think uh, that this House stands in serious danger of being perceived by the public more and more as having uh, taken the position that nothing will satisfy it and that basically the only thing uh, that they want at the end of it all is to defy the decision taken uh, at the time of the referendum. And that is very much the opinion now growing out there, and I was intrigued to listen to the member for Aberavon when he made that point, that we are now being perceived in this place as a parliament opposed to the people, not a parliament to represent the people. The people voted to leave, whether we liked it or not, uh, and now this parliament seems set on a course to obfuscate and delay that with a view eventually uh, to overturning it. And there's no question in my mind, and I would say this concerning his observations during his comments, uh, as I say, legitimate observations, uh, we get on very well, we play football together, so I'm slightly in favour of him anyway. But the point I would make is uh, that he said they were good talks. The problem was his front bench at no stage, I think, conducted those in a genuine sense. I think the truth was uh, they uh, probably never intended uh, to agree anything with uh, my honourable friends who were in government at the time. Uh, and I think one of the reasons for that, and actually interesting, in a whispered exchange with the father of the House... Uh, it was uh, him who made this point, probably, he said, because they were under attack uh, by the, uh, the second referendum crowd who were absolutely opposed to any idea that they could strike any kind of agreement with the government that would do away with the idea of a second referendum and therefore a vote uh, to vote down uh, the original referendum. And I think that lies at the heart of it. There is a deceit in all of this. I don't, as I said earlier on, I genuinely believe that uh, the member of Aberavon, uh, the Honourable Member of Aberavon, was genuine in his view, and many of those who were aligned alongside him in that regard, but I do not believe that to have been the case with the front bench of the Labour Party. I think, in fact, throughout all of this, they have played fast and loose. And when I come to the, uh, to the proposition concerning this bill, I come back to the point why I think this is a bad bill, because for all the talk about not wanting... Uh, to have no deal, but wanting to have a deal, every one of those who proposed, some of them here, I suspect, I know, uh, voted for the Prime Minister's deal, but if they really, really wanted any deal rather than no deal, they would have voted for that. But so strangely, they found themselves voting against it at the time. I give way to my little friend. I mean, he's making an absolutely valid...